The Life of Pythagoras by Iamblichus. This is a new subgenre for me. It's biographies written by ancient dudes about other ancient dudes. And Iamblichus, he wrote this book about mm, around 300 AD and it's about Pythagoras and his life and his teachings. And it's a book that is fascinating, often boring and sometimes complicated. Let's go. Hi and welcome to the book lab, I'm Björn and this is the place where we bring you the best book recommendations when it comes to philosophy, psychology, human nature and human potential. And today we're talking about the life of Pythagoras. And Pythagoras, his thirst for knowledge, it was insatiable. Uh, he traveled everywhere he could, where he thought he could find wisdom and I quote, he thus passed 22 years in the sanctuary of temples, studying astronomy and geometry and being initiated in no casual or superficial manner in the mysteries of the gods." End quote. And on top of that he spent another 12 years studying the sciences. And as Pythagoras' knowledge grew and the wiser he became, he also gained influence and power. He was regarded as a divinity by some and he also was kind of a cult leader. People who were looking for apprenticeship with Pythagoras, they had to go through a lot of hoops in order to meet him. First they were observed and studied for a long time and if they passed these initial tests, they had to stay silent for five years, five years mind you, before they were able to have face-to-face uh, -face time with Pythagoras himself. This was in order for them to learn to control their speech. According to this book, Pythagoras he could tame animals by whispering in their ears, he could be in several places at the same time, he could talk to rivers, which kind of reminds me of another book, this one, uh, autobiography of a yogi which uh, kind of pushed my limits when it came to my uh, my threshold for open-mindedness. Pythagoras he studied diligently for over 33 years with the best mentors the world could provide and he did all this before he even started to teach other people and in modern society we expect things to move so fast so fast right so I thought this was a great reminder of the importance of playing the long game and being patient. And I guess my second takeaway is that uh, <laughs> I got this weird urge to join a cult after reading this for some reason. I'm happy that I read this book. It's not a book for everyone, but one thing that is for sure is that Pythagoras, he's one hell of an interesting dude and there's more to this guy than Pythagoras theorem, which most of us know about. Um, but if you decide to read up on Pythagoras, then maybe choose a more modern biography than this one, because yeah, there is a lot of gems in this book, but between those, there's a lot of this that is going on. Silas, Cleosthenes, Agilus, Epicylus, Pisiades, Epintus, Timaeus, Eteus, Eratus, Idmaeus, Rhodippus, Rias, Evandrus, Milius, Antimedon, Aegeus, Laophron, Agilus, Onatus, Hipposthenes, Cleophron, Almaeusi, Damocles, Milan, Menon, Admetoponton, Recy... Which makes it easy to use those off. What historical figures do you feel like more people should read up on? Which are the peculiar people that fascinate you to no end? For me, I have a few favorites. I mean, I, I, I really find Montaigne fascinating, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Benjamin Franklin, to name a few. Uh, let us know in the comments, share the names and why we should study them. I, I would like to be inspired because I want to read more biographies because they make the world great. I'll be back next Thursday with more book reviews, but until then, smash the subscribe button and like and comment. It really helps me. It doesn't take you long, but it really, really helps me reach more people with great books. Uh, until then, you're out.